Congratulations. You have completed the most important step. You've finished the application. They were impressed with what you had so far. So they said, hey, let's talk. You set up an interview. And maybe a few hours later or the next day, you get this email. And this email has all this information they want you to send. And it can be overwhelming. So what I'm doing for these next few videos is I'm giving you a step-by-step -step approach to uh, completing these materials that you'll need to send in to uh, your recruiter or the person who will interview you with 51 Talk. And the first thing is they say, oh, send me a personal profile. Dun, dun, dun. So what I want us to do <laughs> is I want to um, you to look at the personal profile. They may have changed things since I interviewed, but here's the gist. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through how you complete the personal profile. If your interviewer forgot to send you a copy of your uh, the personal profile sheet, I have a copy of it. I'd be glad to send it to you. Um, and hopefully this will help you uh, get your materials ready so that you can send them out. Okay, so this teacher's profile, this information, though you might think is insignificant, it is very, very important because a lot of this information is what the parents will see when they want to book you for one-on-one -on -one lessons. Um, so it's very important that you put your best foot forward and you spend some a uh, good amount of time on this, thinking about it, maybe making an edit or two before you submit it. Um, because this, uh, the bio, particularly on the teacher profile, is the information that will go underneath your picture. So think of this like Amazon, for example. You are a product, just like a product someone would see on Amazon. So imagine that you're a parent, you're uh, saving and spending a good amount of money on helping your children your ch or your child learn this very important skill set that they'll need to be successful in life, how to speak English. How would you go about, or what qualifications would you go about to look for in choosing someone for your child? Yeah, you're looking for someone that looks fun and happy, someone that your child will get along with well, but you're also looking for some very important skills. So I'm looking at this beginning part right here where it asks for your name, address, your nationality, uh, marital status, your Skype address, and date of birth. That information is probably going to be kept um, within the company, and parents won't see that, okay? Um, but information where we start with your favorite proverb, your education that you've gotten, the schools or the universities that you've attended uh, in the most fascinating experience, which can make your students curious about you, and your ESL teaching, and your current teaching, and your certifications, and whether, what processing system that you're using, they're going to see that. So if you don't know what a proverb is, or a belief system, hey, do a little Google search and look up some proverbs. Um, you know, I can think of my dad's, uh, and some Proverbs, if, if um, depending on what you follow, some of your religious texts will have some Proverbs that you might live by. I really love the proverb, uh, follow the golden, live by the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, but you want to go, in terms of your educational attainment, you want to start with your highest degree that you've earned possible. If you're someone that's still in school, you want to say when is your projected graduation date and what is the degree that you'll receive when you have it? What's your major? And any major counts in 51 Talk. It does not have to be education or English. You wouldn't believe the students that I teach one-on-one -on -one who are into biology, who are into the sciences. And so if you're someone with a science background, that's very helpful. You'll be uh, helpful for them pronouncing particularly really maybe difficult words like deoxyribonucleic acid or something like that if, you're a science, if you have a science background. Um, so all of it counts. All of it's important. All of it works. And your most fascinating life experience, which your students might be curious about. So think about this. Your audience is age 6 to 12 primarily. So um, you want to 
consider uh, of your experiences, what is something that someone who is in school or elementary to middle school age, what might their curiosity be about? Um, on the side, I'm a playwright. I do films. I write books. So for me, I shared that about it. And it proves to be helpful in 51 Talk because sometimes a lot of the lessons, most of the lessons, there are skits. And so we have a lot of fun with the skits um, and acting out the parts of those skits. So those are things that 51 Talk would want to know about and parents would want to know about. Those are skills that can be used. Have you ever taught in any primary school or have you had any ESL teaching experience? You want to think about all of it and you want to think outside the box in terms of your teaching and schooling experience and ESL experience. Remember 51 Talk is not requiring formal experience where you've necessarily been in a formal K through 12 setting in a classroom actually teaching students in that traditional way, they're also looking for non-formal teaching experience. Did you help the neighbor that lives with you, your child or a niece or a nephew do some homework when they were primary school age? Did you, um, did you work with, have you ever been in school and maybe you know a, a different language or maybe you're skillful with helping people with language barriers and you were helping someone um, in translation with ESL. So just don't think about your very formal experiences. Think outside the box. Do you have any certifications in ESL um, or um, TESOL? If not, if you want that, that's one thing that's going to help you earn more when you start working in this online world of ESL. And I have a great program that, that I did that was very inexpensive. I'll be glad to share the link for you if you'd like to do that. Really inexpensive, really cheap. And it's something that you could use to help you make a dollar or two more per hour. It counts. Okay. Now the part, did that say brief bio and a paragraph? Please describe your teaching experience your ESL K through 12 education, background, teaching style, hobbies, or interests. Dun, dun, dun. That paragraph. That can be very scary. Um, don't let it be. So um, you're primarily, even though this is something that the parents will read, don't assume that the parents are very, very fluent. Some of this may be translated into Chinese, but here you do particularly want to put your best foot forward. This is the time that you want to share how much you love working for kids, how much you enjoy working for kids, and what are some fun hobbies. So you want to lead with what you've been teach, how, you, how much you've been teaching kids, formally or informally, and the K through 12, how much you've been working with ESL, what you really love about doing it. Um, what are some of the best things that you do in terms of teaching? You want to make sure that you are fun. I mean, people will learn more from having fun than they do just being, you know, sitting there being lectured to and required to listen. How do you bring the fun into the classroom? What are some things that you do? What's your teaching style? Um, you know, so like I said, I love skits. And so I use props and puppets or whatever in my classes to keep it going, to keep it fun or exciting. What are some things you're going to do? Or what are some things you plan to do in your classroom to make it fun and exciting? Hey, what makes you interesting? What makes you you? What are some hobbies that you have? Um, do you like fishing? Do you like sports? You wouldn't believe the amount. There are a, a lot of girls and boys, and so you want to appeal to both interests. And In China, people love basketball. Anytime I want to talk to um, boys or connect with boys, I ask them about basketball. Now, do I know a lot about basketball? No, but I do know I can say, hey, I went to the same university Michael Jordan went to, and that's exciting for them. Okay, so, um, so that's something that you could talk about. What are some things that are interesting? So you want to make sure you include that. For those of you um, um, who haven't been to school in a while, a paragraph doesn't have to be eight to 10 sentences or a page long. You know, a paragraph is three to five sentences. And I want to say here, you want to shoot for three to five, or maybe I want to say five to six rich sentences about yourself, starting off with your love of teaching and your ESL K-12 formal informal experience, and then ending with, you know, your hobbies and how you're going to include those in 
your classes and make your classes fun. The last thing that they'll need too is a photo of yourself. And I'm gonna do a whole video about the photo. All right. Um, you'll also need to take this at, be able to take this bio. You'll use this bio again. You'll use this bio to make a three minute MP3. And I'm gonna have a separate um, video about that as well too. So, all right, so I hope you can use it. If you like what I'm sharing with you, please subscribe to the link below. I am also gonna put the link in there about a really cheap ESL certification program that you can take, and this will help you make more money in your career as an online ESL teacher. All right, thanks for coming. Bye-bye.